Now that we know all about the spanning tree protocol and some of the commands that we would use to do some configuration, let's set up our network with redundancy. We have the network that we've been working on and let's take it to the next level. So the items that we are going to implement right now, the commands that we're gonna implement right now is going to be set up for the duration of this course. So what we had before is we just had a link between switch two and switch one and between switch three and switch one. What I wanna do is I want to create redundant lines there between these switches and then also between switch two and switch three. And now we have a real self-healing network here that any one of these lines, possibly even two or three of those lines could go down and I still have connectivity within my network. So that's what the goal is going to be. Okay, I have already set up the changes that I wanna make and I've listed out in this notepad here on the right side. So let's go ahead and go through what changes we're going to make to our network. I've also updated, uh, the first thing that I like to do is update my documentation. So I've got my network diagram here and it's already updated with the changes that we're about to implement right here. So I've got that. Uh, up and then also the other thing is my IP ranges to uh, this sheet about documenting my network. I also have had uh, set up all my ports on here. So on headquarters switch one, I'm going to do two uh, different connections, two different links to switch two. I'm gonna do two of them to switch three and just have one to R1 right now. And then with S2, I'm going to have one, uh, two of them going to switch three, two of them going to switch one. And same thing with switch three is gonna have very similar setup as well. So I've recorded that, this is already recorded and I've got that in my documentation. All right, so next let's get into the commands. I'm already remoted into my three switches. I got switch one, switch two, and switch three here. So uh, I've already saved out the configurations, so I got a copy of the configurations. Um, that's important to make sure that uh, if anything goes wrong, then I can just restart these switches and I'll be back up and running. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get into the global configuration mode. I always like to just copy and paste these, uh, so that way I can um, make sure that I know I'm doing everything in an organized fashion. So. The next one is I wanna set the priority. So the spanning tree for VLAN 2, 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 150. I noticed that I'm missing nine, so let's get nine in there as well. I'll save out this document, make, make sure that I save a copy of it. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it into here, and we will hit enter, and now that is the priority. I'm going to, I've already got 43 set up to, to be connected to uh, switch two. And so now I want 44 to be connected into switch two as well. So I don't have it actually physically connected, but this is getting prepped and ready for that. So there is really no spanning tree uh, part of this, except for spanning tree protocol is just gonna allow us to have this second link to that switch without creating a loop to it. And then same thing with our second link that is going to go to switch three. So now both those are in there. I can click end on here. I'm not going to save this until I plugged everything in and make sure everything works. But what I'm going to do next is going to switch two. And notice on switch two, I'm not setting the priority on it. It wouldn't be logical for me to set the priority on every single switch, unless there's like another switch that I want it to be the second, the backup uh, root bridge, uh, then maybe I'd set that priority. But for the most part, this is just a command I want on the root bridge. And now on switch two, what I'm going to do is I also am have other devices that are plugged into it and I want things to come up quickly on this switch. So what I'm going to first of all do is get into the ports here and I am going to configure port fast on those ports. And uh, I um, will just hit this and it will give me that warning but still 
I enter it in. So it's I got it on now 44 interfaces. Uh, and um, wait a minute now. I do notice that uh, I oh yeah so this yeah we're good so that's the those are all the access ports now i want this bpdu guard put on here as well but i can do that as a global level as well so maybe what i'm going to do is make a last minute change here and put this on as a uh with the make it a default right here so and I'll do it for both this and for the other switch three. So I'm going to exit out of here. And let's see if I got this command right. Okay, looks like it took it. So now we've got those guarded against BPDU. And then I also want to, as I mentioned, put that on switch three. So I'm going to paste that down here. And I'll remove that command right there. All right. So uh, next is I want to set up those links. I already have a link to switch one on 48, port 48, so or 47 rather. So this is going to be the same thing, but to port 48. And then I have uh, 46 here, interface 46. And 45, that's going to go to switch two. So let's do the ones that are going to go to switch two first. So I'll copy those and I'll paste them into here. And then I'm going to do the one that goes to that switch one and go into there. All right. So now switch two is all configured. Time to move on to switch three. So switch three. I will get into there. I will enable BPDU guard on here by default. So that's any interface that has port fast turned on on it. Then I'm going to go into all of those access ports and set them up with port fast. So I've got that in there. In there, there. It gives me the warning, says it still configures it. All right, and then I've got these two interfaces that are going to go to switch two. I'll plug that into there. And then finally, we have the one that goes to switch one. And we will plug that in there. Okay, so the next thing that I would do is I would get into testing this, but what I need to do is I need to plug in, physically plug in these ports to have that redundancy. So I'm gonna step away and plug in those ports and then we will take a look and see what happens. All right, I just physically plugged those in. There's nothing like that little click as those things slide in. It's pretty cool. I love being able to physically work on the equipment and also, I, you know, looking at all of the wires and, and how they're routed really nicely and stuff. I don't know, there's something that I just really enjoy about that. So now the question is, is are we up and running? Is it operating as we would expect it to? So I'm gonna jump back over to our Switch 1 and we'll do a couple of those commands we just learned about, like show spanning tree. And we'll just take a look at the summary first. And uh, we see that the BPDU guard is enabled. So we've got that configured correctly. And this is the root bridge for all of these networks, which it was before. So there's not really any change visible from that perspective. We can do a... Uh, show IP interface brief and see what our different um, interfaces say. So let's scroll down and we see that 43 through, through 48, those are all the ones that we connected, are in fact up. So that's looking positive. Uh, let's jump on to see, um, let's do a spanning, a show spanning tree summary on this switch and same thing uh, we see that there are some blocking ports that are happening here so that's good um, that's what we want so we didn't see that it on 
this one right here, they're all forwarding and they're all active on our root bridge, which is what we would expect. But on this one, we have three of them that are in the blocking state, which we have four connections to those different switches. So three of those need to be in the blocking state. So that's good. Let's do a show IP interface brief and see what that looks like. Okay, it does show that all of those are up. So they're in the blocking state from a, st a spanning tree protocol, but this does still show that, that it is up. Let's do a show spanning tree without the summary on it. And um, here is port 45, which is labeled as an alternate route. And we have 47, which is a route, and 48. Eight, which is also an alternate. So everything seems to be just as we would expect it. Uh, we see that in this one, we have the root bridge, which is, or excuse me, the bridge, which is what switch uh, we're on right now, which is switch three, and then the root switch information. So I would say that we successfully entered in all of these. At this point in time, I will save my configurations. I'll save a copy so I have the end result of the changes that we made, and I can consider this project done. We have now created redundancy within our network without creating these loops.